Good morning, everyone. This is Troy Smiller coming back at you with yet another uh, episode in my ongoing series, Propped Up. Did you miss me? Um, I took a much-needed break. Because, I'll be honest with you, everything was dragging me down. The comments on my videos, the... The, you know, the, the, the price of continuing to try stuff. Not to mention the impact that all that trying was having on my health. I actually was losing weight last year. Um, that stopped when I became, when I started posting videos daily. Whatever ground I'd made, I lost. Ah. Uh, also, I, th I thought about how I wanted to be seen. I want to be a writer one day. I want to write for television. I want to write screenplays. I want to work with actors to create timeless, memorable characters. And arcs that will, you know, make people laugh and cry. I don't want to be the food guy. And I would rather fail trying to be the person I want to be than trying to be the person you want me to be. There are two more videos on my phone that I filmed before coming to this decision. One of them is the cut five minutes from the Ethiopian food video where I ramble about how I got the Ethiopian food. The other is me trying the fiery Burger King stuff which is possibly the most venomous and acidic thing I've ever said on camera. And I don't know if I want either of those to enter the public circulation ever again. Well, or at all, I should say. I said I wanted to be a writer. I didn't say I'd be a good one. Going forward... I'm going to be taking my mental health first. Maybe there will be food videos. There's things that I've seen that I legitimately would like to try with you. The apple pie empanadas back. If you've seen the title for this video, you know I love Jurassic Park, and I would love to try Chilean sea bass one day. But, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna run around town struggling to find new things to try every single day and trying to stretch what constitutes a fast food fave every Saturday. It was getting old. Like, it, it, I don't even think it's been a year since I started posting videos. Uh, every day. Less than 365 episodes into that, and I had to stop. It was... It was going to destroy me. My health, my mental health, my wallet. The vain pursuit of some kind of fame and internet success was going to crush me.
And if you don't like that, I'm sorry. If you're here for Royce the Funny Food Guy, I'm sorry. I hope those were fireworks and not gunshots. So, yes, the first five minutes of this video is dedicated to explaining why, and I don't like, I don't like making video, I don't like, you know, the stupid apology video, which this is not an apology, because that would imply that I've, well, actually, I did do something wrong. I tried to cater to people, and that didn't work. You know, I, I kept trying to find new... It... The Royce you you the Royce you all seem to enjoy the the pig the glutton. Well, I wouldn't call that a character. That is a very dark and dismal interpretation of me. And I would rather you know the me that isn't that that isn't going to die before he's 40. And to the people who've done reactions to my channel, please, if you're going to continue it, at least do the videos that I would prefer you to do. The ones where I talk about things that excite me and fill my, my, my you know, depressed millennial heart with some joy. Like today's video, where I shall be talking about ba -ba -da -ba, John Hammond's cane from Jurassic Park. Here we have a prop replica of Mr. Hammond's cane. Now, it's not a very, now, um, it's not 101 screen accurate. I will say, it does have an actual mosquito in it. It's not 100. It's not perfectly in line with the mosquito of the film, but I do like they made the attempt. Um, I would say this is a little smaller than what I would think, but also it could just be that I'm a much that I'm a bit bigger than Mr. Uh, Richard. Is it Richard Attenborough? Yeah, David Attenborough's the narrator. Um. However, instead of a bamboo uh, uh, stalk, or, well, I guess kind of, um, they went with this uh, carved wood that's very rough hewn. It actually needed some more lacquer, I think. I do like the, I do like the, the, the darkening. I believe you achieved that with some kind of burning. I'm not sure, though. And, like, yes, it was lacquered, but just not very much. Or, no, that might just be a good sand. That just might just be sanding. Uh, anyway, um, I do know some... Well, I... I not really. I, I know some people who know how to lacquer, but, you know. But, so, why this? Well... First off, canes are just cool. You know, like... Name someone who doesn't look cool with a cane. Dr. House, who needed a cane, looked cool with a cane. Mind you, the character did, not the actor. Um, secondly, this is kind of a representation of Hammond himself. And, like, I think we need to first establish that the John Hammond of the movie and the John Hammond of the book are two separate characters. The John Hammond of the book is basically Mr. Burns. He's a greedy, decrepit ancient old man who dies getting devoured by compies. A fate that is actually transferred over to uh, Peter Stormare in uh, Lost World. And also, Crichton's original Jurassic Park book is such a violent... Uh, just, like, really mean-spirited book. Honestly, Jurassic World 
with the awful, awful stuff that happened to the babysitter is a more true, like, adaptation of Crichton's book than Jurassic Park. Because, like, a lot of people who aren't terrible, but just do some kind of, like, rude things, get horribly maimed in, in the book. And also, Gennaro, the lawyer, is a good guy and actually lives in the book, too. In fact, he's one of the few characters who doesn't, who, whose fate is changed for the worst in the movie. Since Hammond, uh, uh, the, 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 the doctor, um, and, uh, originally, originally, what's his name? Um, Jeff Goldblum, Ian Malcolm all die. But, the movie recasts Hammond as a much more sympathetic character. And I think part of it is because, like, Spielberg identified with Hammond, wanting to create a theme park. Well, wanting to create an experience that was real. Oh, sorry, indigestion. Um, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, and it, it's interesting because, like, all his hopes and dreams rested with a bug. And the, and that, and you know, he, he has that monologue in the middle of the film where he talks about how owning a flea circus, and all the little animatronic, oops, a little automatons, uh, going back and forth, kids saying, "Oh, mom, I can see the fleas. Can't you see the fleas?" And him trying to play with forces that he didn't understand, trying to create something, and it, it's like he Malcolm, you. Know, before you, know, before you understand it, you, you packaged it, you licensed it, you slapped a label on it, and you're selling it. You're selling it. The book and the movie are anti-capitalist from very different standpoints. The movie is a lot more about the art, uh, like the, the 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 nature, the the and man's relationship to it. The the book is a lot darker. Like, it's a lot more in-your-face. Um, and I think part of why Hammond works better in the movie is because he's this un Uncle Walt personality. You know, he's a kindly old man. He loves his grandkids. He's this cute Scottish old guy. Um, but the company that he represents is, it is pretty evil. And he even turns against them in the second movie. And now I'm just worried that people in comments are going to be like, Oh, Royce, you bring up politics into this. You clearly have never read Crichton's work if you don't think it's political. Science fiction, by its definition, is political. What is the modern Prometheus? But a parable about how we treat others. What is, you know, what is the time machine but a parable about how the 1% will become these, these like, just, you know, a bunch of, like, uh, uh, incompetent, like, lazy children while the, while, while the, while the working class turns into these, turns into the ugly yet intelligent Morlock. So yes, I am a Morlock. Minus the cannibalism. If anything, I'd be the one who's cannibalized. Again, family of four. For like, six months. Even, like, one of my dad's favorite Crichton books... The Andromeda Strain is about you can't trust the government with, like, a disease outbreak because they won't want to weaponize it. Which then translated to Outbreak, which then translated to Resident Evil, and now you have a whole, like, zombie subgenre about bioweapons.
And, you know, like, I'm sure there's right-wing sci-fi, too. Well, for one, uh, you might not, you might not want to hear this, guys, but you know who was in your camp? L. Ron Hubbard. So if you really want someone who understands you, who agrees with you, uh, you, you should read this book series called Mission Earth, which rails against the evils of psychiatry and the gay agenda. Oh, poor Clark. I, I asked... Okay, so... Another little life update for y'all. Uh, we had a power outage today for a few hours, and I didn't want to stick around here while it was out, so I, I asked my cousin to put Clark's... Uh, put Clark's harness on him so I could take him out if I had to. You know, like... <laughs> Sorry, when I said take him out, he... I'm, I, I, I had to reach for the little hanging fruit there. Anyway, um... Uh, so I could take him to, like, I don't know, a park or something until the power came back on. Luckily, it didn't come on. Or it came on not long after. Um, I still should probably take him somewhere. Um. But, yeah. I, this is, like, I don't know. It feels like Hammond saw all his hopes and dreams in this little mosquito. Because what is the first, what is the last thing we see him pondering in the movie? He is staring at the little amber bit on his cane. That is, of course, another thing. This is probably, I believe this is resin. But, you know, I don't mind that. Actual amber would be, with a bug in it, would be very expensive. Well, also I just realized that there's never a scene of him thwacking someone over the head with the cane, even though that would be perfectly in line with the with the uh, with the uh, other cane performance we get from him in uh, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Whack, 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 whack. Um. I think the part of why it's bamboo, too, is just because, like, bamboo looks like such a, you know, uh, it looks like something from another time. It, like, look, like, because it looks almost like bone. You know, like, you could almost replace this with a bone staff, because this looks like a spinal column or something. I, although, I, I think his cane in the movie was a little more yellow, though. But 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 the point still stands. It, it looked like something ancient. It looked it looked like a fossil. And it's interesting because I think a lot of the characters in the first movie had kind of that thing that represented them, something that they could put themselves in. Like Grant had his raptor claw. It represented his worldview. When his worldview was destroyed, when he realized that he liked kids, and that, you know, maybe maybe dinosaurs are and he, and you know when he finally got to see dinosaurs up close and personal, he threw the claw away. Hammond still had a bit of his dreamer side in him, so he kept his cane. He kept that hope alive with him. Um. Not sure what Ellie Sattler or Ian Malcolm's thing would be. There's just a lot. There's a lot of cool. There's a lot of cool props in that movie. The the in fact the 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 golden goose or like the 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 the, the white whale for me of what I would like to have from prop collecting is a is a working like not it doesn't have to be totally working but like a working model a, a working model that fits my fat head of the of the uh, night vision goggles that Tim uses. Those run super expensive, like 500 bucks each. Like and even then they're not always 
like they're not always good versions. I've I've looked I looked on Etsy, the ones I've seen, garbage. That and a photorealistic version of Jumanji. Like a, a like a, a screen accurate version of Jumanji. Um I tried to get the Noble Collection one once. It was such garbage, I returned it. I was back in 2021, I think. Yeah, 2021. I got it Christmas 2020. Or no, not... Or Christmas... Tw I got it Christmas 2021. And then returned it 2022, early. Because it was so bad. I hated it that much. Um... Yeah, that was... Because, like, okay. It did... Okay, so, like, the the box wasn't wood. That's fine. That's a price concern. They didn't even put a, a wood grain pattern on it. Like a, a, a like a wood grain sticker or whatever. It looked like... It it, it, it had, like, shiny flecks in the, in the plastic. And then the features of the board cover were so soft... Like, they, they looked like they were made from fondant. You know, it looked like it was a cake. And then inside, the, the pieces weren't weathered. Which, I mean, that's, that's kind of minutia, but, you know. The, the box was a little warped, which could have been from the intense cold. I, I, I admit. The, the Eye of Jumanji, the centerpiece of the game wasn't a fixed piece, didn't light up, it was a plastic dome over some green felt. And, and this is another minor one, it wasn't magnetic. And then one of the worst mistakes of, one of the, one of the biggest mistakes the Noble Collection made was they got the stickers wrong. The sticker, or so the stickers are supposed to face one each side, where, you know, a Jumanji, a game for those who seek to find a way to leave the world behind. And then the other one that's that faces the other way is Adventurers Beware. And that's the actual warning that tells you, like, oh, hey, this game board is cursed, by the way. Oh, man, that's another really good movie. Like, the 90s had so many good movies, so many timeless films. It's weird that we don't have as many timeless films anymore. You know? And I don't know if that's just me getting older and being an old crank, but... <sighs> Part of it, I think, is we've... We haven't achieved a... Like, we haven't found a way to allow new blood in. And this is a big thing that I think. What, the way to get into the Hollywood writing system nowadays is so complex, so convoluted, that I don't think anyone can really do it anymore. Until, I don't, I'm like, how, how am I going to say this? This isn't, oh, this isn't a reflection on... You need to already be famous to be a screenwriter, it feels like. You need to be part of the boys' club. You need to be, you know, like, in a union. You need to... Be, which, again, I, I don't want to badmouth unions. Unions are good for, for a lot of stuff. But when I can't... When I can't even apply for a screenwriting position... at all it 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 bothers me on a deep personal level because i just i want to create i want to write and people won't let me they want me to slave away at a job that i hate slowly losing my humanity and that's going to destroy me someone said this on twitter already but it's worth reiterating here. The next, the next generations of great artists are being, are being destroyed by the service industry because we do not have the, because we do not have the, uh, 
the, the, the safety nets in place that they can explore their craft. You know, it... I just want to write. I just want to have that be my career. And no one will let me. The only people who will listen to me are people who want me to pay them. And that just feels so sad. Am I that untalented? Am I that stupid? That, only, that I could only get someone to publish my work if I gave them money. What else is there to say? You know? I have so many fantasies about what I would do if I actually did have millions of dollars. Yeah, you know, people say like, oh, you know, winning the lottery wouldn't, or would actually make your life worse. And it's like, no, it wouldn't because one, the, the, the quality of my life would change drastically. Two, I have a purpose for it. I would immediately go and make a film and like, you know, tried it, but the whole system for that is so, uh, you know, I'm just a poor old, poor, you know, I'm just a fat, fat idiot, you know? I, I want to be the John Hammond. Most people see me as the Dennis Nedry. Except Dennis was smart. He was a computer programmer. I was not. I actually flunked at computer programming. Much to my mom's consternation because she has this weird eugenicist belief that because she and her husband are good at computer programming that her kids should be good at computer programming. Not sure I uh, follow that logic. Honestly, I could never be a computer programmer because I hate failure so much. Which, like, oh, you want to be a writer and you're afraid of failure? Uh, half of writing is failing. Fair. But, like, when you fail at writing, you can redo the passage on your computer, but when you fail at, when, when you fail at, uh, all the, when you fail at programming, you don't know when, what went wrong. I'm actually trying to get in contact with a, with a studio right now to see if they'd be interested in taking on one of my projects, and talking to them about, like, how to finance it and stuff. They seem a little interested, but only time will tell. The problem is, like, will they see the real Royce, or will they see what you see? A fat guy who shovels stuff food into his face. I don't know. This video's gone on so long, and it's barely about what the prop actually is. <sighs> but I needed to I needed to clear the air. Like I said, I don't like apology videos. I don't like videos that are like, oh, I've, you know, I'm sorry. And I, I don't like videos that try to 
explain what a person, you know, what a person's viewpoint is. I don't want to be that way. I don't want to be this, I don't want to be that kind of person who's just so cynical that they got to sit you down in a whole separate video and just like, gee, sport, let's talk one-on-one. -on -one. I, I'm going to treat you like an adult because I'm going out on a limb and assuming that you are an adult or at least emotionally mature, that you, that you understand that I am a human being, that, and like, honestly, if, if dubs you are watching, this is great for your channel because no more people requesting you to react to my videos. No more, or, or cause, cause you said yourself, I'm bad for your channel. So you can, so instead of reacting to me, you can react to more popular people. Um, and I'm not going to say what I think about reaction YouTubers. I'm going to be nice. I had so many vile things that I said in that Burger King video, and I don't know if I want to be that mean. If you want to watch someone, dubs, if you want to watch someone make food content that you can react to that'll be funny and that might get you actually, might actually get you clicks, I recommend Mythical Kitchen. Josh Air, really cool guy, does a lot of cool stuff, makes some absolutely horrifying food. Um, or hey, how about Tasting History? Learn, or like, learning about history with your audience. While you enjoy, some, while you watch a guy enjoy some good food, well, good, you know, some of the f stuff he makes looks a little sus. Like, oh lord, uh, there's that one, that vinegar punch that he talks about, uh, switchel. That sounds disgusting. Anyway, it's been 30 minutes, 32 minutes now. Almost 33. What else is there to say about the game? It's just a good prop piece. Like, I, I like canes. You know, handheld props are some of the best because there's something you can hold in your hand. And honestly, like, I'd love to, I'd love to do a John Hammond cosplay or a costume for Halloween and, or, you know, a, 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 a convention. Problem is, like, going, going as a Jurassic Park character to an anime convention might be a little weird and there's not really many comic book conventions in the Midwest, mostly anime conventions. What does that say about us? We don't have, like, San Diego Comic Con or anything. We have Anime Iowa and Nebraska Con and Naka Con. Naka Con's actually a really good one, though. It's a really fun time I had there. Uh, got to meet Travis Willingham. Got to meet, uh, tr uh, got to meet, I think I said this before, but I got to meet, uh, one of my favorite voice actors, uh, tr something McNeil. Scott McNeil. But honestly, this break has just been really good for me. And I think weekly videos might be the way to go. Trust me, I'm not looking forward to it as... I, I'm... Trust me, I get it. You guys are not going to enjoy it. The one who's probably not going to enjoy it most of all is my grandma, who treated these as basically her getting to interact with me. So I gotta, so I'm gonna probably call her tomorrow and be like, "Hey, grandma, I'm so sorry that I'm posting videos. Please watch the one that I just posted today." Anyway, I. We'll talk to you all later. I don't know what next what next week's video is going to be. Hopefully it's a good one. This is Royce Miller. Let me get the second chip. There we go. That's the money shot. I'm outie.